As the technicians implement the final components of our home automation system, our flooring installers begin tile installation for the laundry room and the upstairs fireplace. For this job, we'll be using another product containing recycled material. So let's take a look at how the tiles for these areas are made. Here we are at the factory in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. We're gonna take you through the process of how we make the porcelain floor tile. The process all starts right here with this scrap tile. We process the scrap tile back into our body. We've been doing this for about two years now. What this is doing for the environment, it's saving about 10 tons of material a day from going to the landfill. We need to grind it down to a small enough particle that it will fit into our processing equipment without doing any damage. Then we kind of use it as a filler material back into the body Instead of sending it out to the landfill, it can be a part of our process again. It's taken a little bit of time to get the equipment and the technology into place to do this, but now that we've been doing it for about two years, it's really helping the environment through this process. As you can see here, we've got our pile of ground up tiles already. We grind it down to about a quarter inch size. This allows us to process the tile through our process without jamming up the equipment. You may be wondering, you see all the different colors mixed in here, does that affect the processing? Not really at all, it's such a small amount, plus this is a small amount of the body compared to the other raw materials, that it really doesn't affect the overall color of the body of the tile. We'll take the fired scrap here, along with our other raw materials and the other storage bunker, mix them together in our bra mill and make the body of the tile. Here we are at the next step of the process where we put all the raw materials together into our batch. Darren is going to explain that to us. He's got a lot of experience working with this area. One of the things that we do when we bring the raw materials in, we then dump it into the hoppers you see behind us. The computer will then put the raw material into each individual silo. Each raw material has its own holding silo. The computer then will create a recipe of sorts, and it will blend that material back onto the conveyor belt, and that material will be taken out into our ball mill for further processing. the factory. As you can see behind me, we've got the big equipment running. This is where the process really gets exciting. Really start doing a lot of work on the raw materials. The process behind me is our continuous ball mill. What we do with this process, we take all the raw materials we looked at outside, mix them together with water to form a slurry. Also inside the ball mill, we use these different types of stones to grind the raw materials to the right particle size and also to mix all the raw materials together for the body of the tile. It takes about an hour and a half for the material to pass entirely through the ball mill. In this part of the process, we've got silica stones in the first chamber of the ball mill. We've got the alubite balls, which are much more dense grinding media in the second two chambers. All right, here we are at the next step in the process, the pressing. We'll take the raw materials that we processed in the body preparation department and feed them into the press behind me. As you can see, we're pressing 10 tiles at a time with almost 10 million pounds of force on the large cylinder of the press. You can see this is a very dusty part of the process. All of the hoses around are actually collecting the dust, which again will go back into the body. From here in the pressing process, we'll take the tile, run it through a dryer to the glazing process. And the glazing is where we add the decoration to the surface of the tile. We'll spray the glazes on either with an airless spray application, we can put it on with a waterfall type application, and then we'll print the design. We can print it with a silicone cylinder, or we can use an inkjet printer, which gives us a much more wide range, a variety of uh, printing options. Here we are at the uh, printing process. This is the last part of the tile manufacturing process before we fire the tiles. You can see behind me here, we've got one of our digital inkjet printers. Here we upload the design into the computer and the computer will print on each tile as it passes by a different image. The number of images that we can print on the tile is only limited by the amount of storage in the computer. The other process for decorating the tile, which is a little bit more limiting, is a silicone cylinder that actually prints the design that's engraved on a silicone roller. There you can only get about four or five different images before you get a repeat. You may have noticed also on the glazing line area, there's a lot of water used. Through this process, we also recycle the water here in the factory. Any processed water that's used for cleaning up the equipment 
as we do a color change. That all goes to our water treatment plant here on site and gets clean and then right back into the process. We can use that in the ball mill to mix the body. We can also use it for further cleaning in the process. After the decorating of the tile, the tile is ready to go to the kiln for firing. In the firing process, that's where the tile gets its final strength. The glaze is all hardened over to their glassy form. And then the tile is ready for selection and packaging and ready to go to the customer. When the tile products are finished, they're measured by lasers and inspected for visual defects. Automatic packaging machines take care of the packaging and sorting, and then the product is ready to ship all over the country. Our tile is inspected by the installers on site, and installation in the home commences. A lot of the tile work that's being installed in the house has recycled content in it, so it is a green product and the way it's being installed is we're using green materials for the mortar and grout, so we're making sure that everything is environmentally friendly that goes into the home and how it's applied into the home. None of our adhesives or glues will have VOCs in them and a lot of our grouts and stuff will be mildew and bacteria resistant. We decided to do something a little different for the fireplace around here. We went with a tile that kind of has a look of stone, a little more subtle. Traditionally what's either done is faced with brick or stone and stuff that's a little more coarse and rough. So we wanted to kind of tone it down and make it, make it a little bit blend better with the space, not stand out as much. Obviously the architect and the designer come up with the concept, but you leave it to the tile setter, this is something they're doing every day, it becomes their expertise. They pick up on things that you normally wouldn't draw attention to. It's something simple as an outlet location or offset corner, things like that, or how a pattern reads a running bond. So you rely on their expertise because this is something they're doing and they know, they know the tricks of the trade and how to carry things through and bring a lot to the table when it comes to doing the installation.